Stripper Thursday! Woo! Woo! And we are at Dogfish Head Brewing and Eats in Rehoboth Beach with the legendary, the man, Aww. my oh, idol, oh, the no. Sam Calagione. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I have Thank promised you. I will not touch or hug him awkwardly. Now Ooh. that it's rolling. Now that it's rolling. It's a little awkward <laughs> earlier. But. So, but this is, we have spent the, we spent the evening here last night. We've spent the morning, the day in Rehoboth Beach. Um, this is a great community. Um, I love this location. The, we were down at the boardwalk earlier. Um, this pub is beyond belief. It's every, it's more than anything I could have imagined. So I'm, I've wanted to be here for so long, and now I'm here, and, and we're drinking, we're drinking, and and eating, and eating, and it's hanging. just ah, it's so yeah. amazing. So I'm glad you guys are. I'm here. I'm gonna probably geek out a lot during this episode. I apologize to the viewers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. Steve definitely hyped it up, so I was afraid, like I was expecting too much. Yeah, you know what? You when you see a movie and your expectations are too high. Yeah, like, but no, it blew away those expectations. It's been good. Thank uh, you. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I mean, literally, you guys right now. Now are almost as far away as you can be in, in continental U.S. <laughs> from, from our home. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So on behalf of everyone here on the very East Coast, thank you for making this, yeah. this long trip. We appreciate it. Hey, the East it. Coast has well, been good to us so beer. far. So. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. Nice. nice. Thanks for giving us a reason. Well, <laughs> our pleasure. So today we're going to be sitting here. We're drinking the, this is the 75 minute IPA. Yeah, so this is a cast conditioned uh, version. So what we do is since 60 and 90 are two of our best selling beers and they're all, by the way, cheers guys. Yeah, cheers. Uh, exactly. Cheers. Thank cheers. you for making the trip. Thank you. And so while nine, 90 and 60 are kind of always there's batches in the 30-something fermenters that we have out at the big brewery, we set up this other smaller uni tank so that we could always blend 50-50 into it. And then Brian Selders, the brewer who were brewing together downstairs, came up with this cool machine called Cascasse, which is a very, uh, we converted all these kegs to be a, a, a really quick cask cleaning and filling thing. So what we'll do is we'll send 50% 60 and 50% 90 into this little tank. It's got special hooks in it to hold giant sacks of hops. So this beer is even more hoppy than 60 or 90. Oh, and wow. then we dose in uh, maple syrup from my family's farm in Western Mass, right on. just at the point where we're casking it. So all this natural carbonation doesn't come from barley sugars, it comes from maple syrup. And this That's is really not cool. bottled, right? That's really cool. No, this is, you can only get this, uh, well here we send a little to Philly, a little to uh, Boston, a little to New York City. So this is this is a true New Brew Thursday for all of us. Yeah, we, yeah. I want to make sure it was something that you yeah, guys had this is crazy. Had, had it's before. really good. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, um, and I, I like the fact that you, um, being who you are in the beer community and being a beer celebrity or whatever, when we came in here, you are wearing your Violent Femmes, which is a, uh, I'm a big fan of Violent Femmes as well, so. Right. Uh, you just get kind of like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm brewing, so come on in if you want to shoot working. some brewing. And <laughs> he's like, I'm working, so come in and watch me. He's just doing whatever, and that's awesome. That's that's great. Well, yeah, we had we had, uh, we had three things going on downstairs <laughs> today. We had, we were brewing, Brian and I were brewing a, a, a blend of two-threaded two beer, which was actually three-fourths of it, three out of the four threads are an Imperial Stout. Uh, made with African sugar, and then the fourth thread is a traditional Ethiopian tej, which is a honey beer that's right. bittered instead of with hops with geisha root. A and tree this is root. one of your test batches. Yeah, this one actually we have. An, this one is something that we're planning on releasing in bottles uh, late this summer, mm -hmm. but we just have an agreement to not announce what the name is going to be. Uh, we know what June. it is. Okay, don't, don't tell. Don't tell. <laughs> we don't yeah. know. So that was going on downstairs, and then we were shooting our own video. It was kind of postmodern. You guys were shooting us shooting a video of uh, our new generation. Art imitating life. Yeah, it art, art. Yes. Imitating <laughs> it was, what was the um, Mike Myers uh, skit where he was the German Sprockets? Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm the only dude not wearing black, or we would, it, would be, it would be Sprockets right That's now. Right. <laughs> so yeah, that was the the Russell the enamel animal, mm -hmm. which uh, Randall Russell's cousin. Russell, 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 Russell yeah. Uh, you know, I think I've always called it Russell, right? And you should. Yeah, I think it's because you know, Russell the Wonder Muscle is always right in my head. instead <laughs> of Randall <laughs> the enamel. Yeah, animal. Randall the enamel. Has that really made it in our show again, Russell the Wonder Muscle? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I will get it into the show as often as possible. Uh, so that Randall is a it's a great concept. I love that the fact that you just. Right as you're about to drink a beer, you infuse it with some more hops and yep. some oils, and it really just boosts, it just ranks, or ranks up, yeah. it ramps, ramps up yep. the flavor amazingly. I love that. Flavor. Yeah, so. it's fun to try a, a, a 90 minute that didn't come from Randall two minutes before you send it through, 
And while since it's post boil, you're not really picking up true bitterness, the right. perceived bitterness and the aromatic change in that beer is uh, pretty significant. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, and the the first time I ever saw that was at GABF, and of course there, you know, if you go to GABF, you'll see 500,000 people lined up at the Dogfish booth. So if you want Dogfish beer, you probably got to go somewhere else to get it. Uh, but come around the side. But come around the side, five. like woo, yeah, <laughs> a little like secret handshake. But you had one there, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I want to see that. I want to try that. And I finally got to try it at uh, Blue Palms, Brew, Pop, Brew House yeah. in Hollywood. Nice. Uh, Brian has one over there. Nice. So it was it was cool. I was like, oh, that's that's so awesome. I think that was like the version one, though. Yeah. The, the version, green yeah, one like, that you see downstairs. Yeah. yeah. There, right? And we made, of that first version, I think we sold over 200 of those to different breweries and Ooh. pubs around the country. Our, our chief operating officer, Nick, who's amazing and uh, particularly at our operations side and our cost side, initially when I said, okay, we came up with this great idea for real-time hopping and I want to sell it at our cost. He's like, <laughs> not make one dollar? I'm like, nah, because karmically, I think the opportunity for any, any beer lover or beer newbie to try a beer through this and actually see at the point that they're ser being served their beer how hops, it, 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 it shows it them how hops can right. affect their beer yeah. was something that I didn't want dogfish to have. I just wanted it to be out there. So it was neat that I think over, like I said, 200 of those got made and now this new generation works way better and we're going to do the same thing. It's obviously a lot more pimped out, more expensive, but rest right. assured, we're still not making a dollar off of it. So <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Really cool. And that's, you know, I think that's a, a pretty significant part of you guys' viewpoint towards the craft beer community as a whole. Like you've done a lot of collaboration stuff. Um, you were recently at Stone, which is where we I first came other. over yep. and, and, you know, made you feel awkward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's where I first met Russell, the Wonder Muscle. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just kidding, honey. That didn't happen. I swear to God. <laughs> um, but uh, you guys did a Saison de Buff yep. with you and Stone and Victory uh, Brewing, yep. uh, which is a phenomenal beer. I think they said it's just about ready to uh, go into the bottling. Start and, towards packaging, yeah. the first one. We're, so it's kind of a unique collaboration in that instead of us all j going to one place, doing one beer together, which is a lot of fun, I've done a lot of collaborations that way, we said, let's make this one more interactive for the consumer and make three different versions of it together at each other's breweries but then people can try all three and mm. hopefully they, you know, everyone's palate's different, which is why there's as many awesome beers as there are. People might have preferences or people might like to do like two thirds of one and yeah. one third of another and start blending themselves at home. Right. Uh, so we saw an awesome opportunity to kind of take collaborations in a different route that gives the consumer more control within the own collaboration and can add iteratively to that collaboration. So that's it should be awesome. fun. Yeah. 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 Should be fun. And that's kind of been the new the new thing over the last couple of years is the the collaboration brews with the different breweries mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. And it's it's phenomenal because one of the things about dogfish that I've really liked forever is that you guys are so on the extreme. You're just always trying something new. You're I mean the we did a, we did Pangea on our show a couple of months back. And I love that beer simply because of the fact that it comes from everywhere in the world, you know. Yeah. Water from Antarctica. Who the hell brews yeah. Yeah. water from Antarctica? <laughs> or, or more importantly, what asshole decided to make Antarctica <laughs> country, a continent? A country, a continent. That, exactly. That screwed up our shipping costs tremendously. <laughs> so exactly. But I, I, and I, I love your, your, your video that you do for the brewery, the brews. And then for that one, you're like, it was penguin shit or water? You'll be glad with the choice we made. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's true. So that one was a fun one to kind of put the whole world into liquid form together, you know, particularly, particularly in an era when there's so much right. fractional warring and, I, and crap going on. Well, that, and that's the thing. I, I read during that period of time, I was reading your book, uh, Bring Up a Business, and you talk about why you created that beer. And I think that's why I really fell in love with that beer is that it was this, it was this moment in your life when everything was going to shit, basically. Yep. Um, and you know the the brew pub had kind of exploded. You're, Literally, you're, we're yeah, tank you're in Montana on vaca your very first vacation from opening this thing. And I know, like as a business owner myself, that it, the idea of leaving your business, even if it's in capable hands, yeah. is like no. And you know, I went on cruise with my wife, and the whole time she's like, "Can you get off your computer?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, just a second. Like, let me just make sure I'm doing this." And so separating yourself from that is difficult as it is. And then when you the first day, you're like, "Oh crap!" And I, I mean, if it had been me, I'd have been like, "Yeah, sorry, Mar, I'm out." I yeah, I, I'm back. I I'm doubt it. Home. Any entrepreneur knows how to make lemons out of lemons. Yeah, and, and so I mean, but the fact that you turn that into a beer, yep. you know, because you're sitting on the, the 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 couch with your son watching a movie about dinosaurs, and it's like, oh, Pangea, let's bring the world back together again. That was awesome, and it just I think that solidified my love of dogfish beer as a whole oh, because of you. the fact that whole attitude of like. 
you know what? Let's just let's make something cool about this. You know? Yeah. And well, thank you. That's one of my my favorite beers that we do. So I, I appreciate that. Getting back to the beer and the food. Yeah. Oh yeah. We oh, have yeah, a yeah. splitter of food. Yeah. Here. We, have, yeah. we have food going on. I yeah. had the calamari last night. Oh, you did. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is, well, no, th no. Actually, this is good right. because we were talking about how <laughs> different it is to have banana peppers in calamari. What do they do in California? They don't put banana peppers. It's in just it. uh, calamari and lemon. That's <laughs> yeah. about oh, really? Maybe like yeah. a little like. It tastes amazing too. Like chives or parsley or there's okay. some kind of green garnish on it. Garnish. Yeah. yeah. Um, I figured they maybe out west just garnished it with hops because they don't like balance. Right. Everything is hops. Um, now, but speaking you, of crazy beers, yeah. can I just say way into, um, I mean, besides the Pangea, you've done some other crazy beers like the uh, Theo Broma uh -huh. and then the um, something Jahua. Jahu. Yep, yep. And um, I guess where do you kind of come up with these? Um, yeah, I mean, roughly a little bit, bro. That's one of the fun parts of this job is that all, we can do you just limit go to a library and uh, <laughs> just, yeah, we know. I mean, Pick a book and it see can what come happens. from any direction, like some that didn't work. What's also neat is, because we've been brewing these sort of exotic non rhein about beers since the day we opened in this very building 15 years ago, now you know that we're somewhat established and known for taking risks with what we do, it's been really fun to see how many just beer lovers come out of the woodwork you know, worldwide to give us ideas. You know, we had a brewer in the Arctic Circle say, you gotta make this beer with Cloudberries, a home brewer, and he mm -hmm. sent it, and it was a disaster because the cloudberries cost so much money and shipping and, <laughs> and tariffs, really tariffs. cloudberries. What are cloudberries? Yeah. Really, <laughs> <laughs> some sort of frozen <laughs> pomegranate, really. And then, or sometimes they're a complete. It can't happen, which is like right. some hippie from Santa Fe wanted us to brew the first beer with crystals for your chakra mm -hmm. or a karma or something. We're like, all right, we'll call you, don't call us. <laughs> but uh, but sometimes the inspiration that d that doesn't come from our from our own uh, side is really impressive and leads us down a really fun route. So that relationship that we have with Dr. Pat McGovern, who's a molecular archaeologist based out of UPenn, has this far yielded three beers that we package and distribute, which are Theobroma, which is an ancient Central American cocoa beer, uh, Midas, which is the first we did together, which is a 2,700-year-old Turkish beer, uh, and then Giahu's especially warm in my heart because as far as anyone in the science or history community knows that's the oldest known fermented beverage. It's a 9,000 year old recipe discovered in the tomb in Turkey. Also significant because until that discovery happened, uh, gr fruit based beverages, i.e. wine, mm -hmm. had, had, had further back molecular evidence than grain based uh, beverages, i.e. beer. Wow. So, you know, wine people can suck it because now beer, <laughs> beer is known. Dude to be the oldest beverage. And, and that, that period in time, 9,000 years ago, pretty much coincides when humans shifted from hunting and gathering nomads to settling to down like in villages. To couches and TVs. Uh, exactly, and, Wait, and waiting for <laughs> crops. Exactly. Uh, Growing hops. Exactly, so. crops were, grain was grown to group, make beer and that's when uh, people settled down in villages and uh, civilization began because of beer, pretty much. Awesome, <laughs> and that's why we love beer. Yes. So, now you guys, um, the the Jahu and the um, and I I'm Midas. I like to pretend I speak Chinese, so I mean I the, that the, anyway. the town. But, yeah, the site, exactly. The site of the dig. All of those all of those beers like the Midas touch is still widely available. Mm -hmm. um, the Theo Broman I'd never even heard of until we got here. Mm -hmm. So that was yeah. that was a new thing for me. And I haven't tried that. You, you, you didn't it was it would just it, was, it, it just, just got kicked, yeah. Really? Last Maybe night. if somebody hadn't been looking Last at squirrels. Here. Yeah, yeah, I blame so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so hopefully, hopefully he'll put on a cake. Yeah, both one, day, day. one day, one <laughs> day. Midas of those three is the only year-round one. Right. But we do some ancient beers that come from our own inspiration, like uh, uh, Sati, which is our version of like a, a Finnish uh, Sati. It's S A H T I is the traditional spelling, which is a rye juniper beer made in uh, for many centuries in, in Finland. Our version has like this uh, mixed Indian tea with curry and cumin. And, uh, chai tea uh, in it, and it's cooked with rocks, hot rocks, right instead of uh, steam or, or now direct you, fire. Wow. You also do future beers. We like do? Rapid Sweet. Pecan. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> so it's a big, huge Star Trek geek. Yeah. When I saw your label for Wrath of Pecan, I was just like, oh my god, I want that beer! We, uh, that one was kind of a challenge because we, the federal government, God bless them, that they, <laughs> we're happy to pay them their, the taxes that we do. and. We're happy the three-tier uh, system exists so that there's mm -hmm. distributors that sell our beer because otherwise the giant breweries 
would absolutely dominate to an right. extent they don't if they could go direct to retail. Um, but so all that stuff's important. And, uh, but the challenge is because we do so many exotic beers with the ingredients that haven't been used in the beer before, whenever we submit a level, a, a label, ours get kicked up to the head dude at the feds. And we, when we submitted Wrath of Pecan, uh, they, were, they didn't like it because it didn't have actual pecans in the beer. It was uh, okay. malt pr produced over pecan wood smoke, smoke malt. Oh, God. So at the 11th hour, they allowed <laughs> us to call it Wrath of Pecant. Kind of, yes, the, okay. We want to do apostrophe T, but they wouldn't even let us do the apostrophe. Wow! So you can see how much. Well, they this care. is this is what you get for producing a label that said Golden Shower. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you are you are absolutely right. When they approve that one, their opinions kind of shift. They're like, them. oh, someone, wait a minute, we need to take a closer look yeah. at these people. Someone, someone didn't get it. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. The oh, guy. Golden Shower. Yeah. Nice. You've done a lot of writing. You've done a lot of um, being in movies. I don't know Not about a lot, that. but you've done one anyway. Outside of porn, it's been like <laughs> one or two. Ooh, awkward. <laughs> you've done a lot of that kind of stuff. What, what's the premise behind the non-beer stuff that you do? Well, because you know when we when we started in this building in that era, we were brewing twelve gallons at a time. So mm -hmm. we were the smallest commercial brewery in the country out of about eight hundred breweries in ninety five. So in that era, any sort of marketing that we did was truly grassroots, right. trying to just get our beer in front of people. And even in that era, when we were doing all we've ever done is these big flavorful beers. So. That's why we opened as a brew pub, because we knew if we could get people into the place where we made the beer and make them try it in the context of food, they would see that beer has all the complexity, diversity, and food compatibility as wine. That was always our goal. And, uh, you know, it's, beer is finally getting its, its moment in the culinary world, and it's ironic that it's happening in the recession where here it is, craft beer is the, the, the most expensive segment of beer industry and yet it's growing in a, in a recession. It seems counterintuitive, except when you see that for a 20 or 30 percent premium off of cheap lager beer, you can get world class beer. You can't do that right. in the world of wine. And the big breweries, true. Have nev they've never spent any of their time and their huge marketing resources on promoting their beer with food because frankly, and I love light lager, frankly, we, we uh, me, myself and Jason are on the dogfish hockey team here and uh, after a, a game playing hockey, I crave a light lager, you know, because right. it's refreshing and, and, uh, and I'll drink a big, yeah, I'll, I'll drink a can of ice cold lager and that's what it's, for me, awesome for. But it is not a great partner for food, right. craft beer is. And so now people are seeing, wow, I can get this world-class stuff at a fraction of the cost of world-class wine that is just as good of a partner for food. I Even think better. That's a yeah, big reason. If not better. A big yeah. reason why we're doing all right, right in on. a recession, all the craft brewers. Well, and speaking of that, each week we do a master pairing mm -hmm. with Dr. Bill. And so um, why don't we go ahead and cut to that? Can I give a shout out to Dr. Bill? Shout, shout out, out to Dr. Bill. Woo! Shout out! I love you. <laughs> So we're here with another Master Pairings with Dr. Bill, and uh, we're doing something kind of basic. A little different, huh? It's a little different, a little basic. Well, we're doing a hot, uh, hot dogs, the, right? You guys just did an episode with Sam, I'm, and love you, Sam, too, but you know, a little long, so we're going to cram something in. Uh, we're actually going out to the Craft Brewers Conference next week. In Chicago. In Chicago, so it's going to be really cool. So what better thing to do? I thought we'd Throw on some Chicago dogs and a little Orval. Yeah. You know, only because it has to still be Orval. I've never so, had Orval. So oh, really? I don't know what I'm in for. You're the really. guy that doesn't like the Belgian beer set much, right? I don't know. I'm coming around. I'm coming yeah, around. I, I think you yeah. are. So here you go. I'm acquiring a taste. These are classic Chicago dogs. Yes, there is a large pickle and some peppers in your hot dog. Oh, look at this. Oh, uh, see? Yes. Pickles and peppers, hot dogs, hey. sausages. My, pi my pickle is better, bigger than yours, but <laughs> well, should yeah. be. All right. All right. So, anyways, you can take a bite. I should have poured the beer first, but you know, but, I you thought, know, let's let's wait. Let's pour the beer. I'm I thought we should show off the hot dogs real quick yeah. and get that. They're beautiful hot away. dogs, by the way. I gotta say. So you have a shimmy glass because I broke my or other Orval. Yeah, that was tragic. Recently. That was very tragic. 
My heart broke wow, a little bit really with glass. Lively. So Arval is one of the Trappist Ales. It's the most unique of the Trappist Ales. It is the only one commercially sold by uh, the, the monks at Arval. They do do a single beer called a Vert that you can get if you're, well, I guess you can't get it probably, but it's their everyday beer. It's pretty great though. Uh, lower alcohol, but this is a really nice beer. So this is it's actually, got, this is made by monks. Yes. Wow. It's one of the Trappist breweries and it's got Britannomyces in it. And I consider it one of the hoppier oh. beers in Belgium. Ooh. There you go, a little money shot. Yeah. All right. Hot dogs and money shots. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Don't be afraid of the foam. Foam and craft beer is great, especially in Belgian beer. So, cheers. Cheers. Herbal is one of my desert island beers. Very hoppy, very bitter. You all right? You can swallow. Uh, Ooh, that's sweet. Very hoppy, very bitter, very enjoyable. Let's see how it goes with this uh, classic Ch Ch Chicago dog. Chicago dogs. Hmm. That is yummy. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Mm. Brings out a nice sweetness in the ball. That's lovely. See, I would have poured your glass appropriately. Oh, yeah. Wow. Ball glass. You know what really uh, comes out is the tomatoes with this. Yeah. The tomatoes. There's a little heat left over from the peppers. and. Mm. But yes, you're right. Wow. I got a big piece of pickle on that one. It's okay, it's gonna go great with the ball. Oh yeah, the pickle goes really well awesome. with the ball. Now I will say this was kind of a no-brainer because Orval goes great with many, many foods. No-brainer for you maybe. I would range. never would have thought to put this with a freaking but, hot um, dog. No, That's it goes amazing. great and I just wanted to do this in tribute to the great people of Chicago, which I've been many times, and I can't wait to get back there with you guys and show you yeah, around. Yeah, we're actually heading back there to do a, a, a video for uh, New Brew Thursday, kind of along the lines of the Stone video, I'm a craft brewer, but it's gonna yeah. be I'm a craft beer drinker. Yes, it's so, gonna be fabulous. I, th I think it's really great. I yeah. think it's show a tribute to that other section of the craft beer uh, scene, which is the all the great fans of brewers. And Pretty much the other half of the whole craft beer yep. industry, the people that actually drink the beer, so. You know, that's, you kind of need the people that drink the beer to make the beer. So I think this has been a great master pairings. So thanks again. Cheers. She, see you guys in Chicago. Boom. Now, you have also were in the, the Beer Wars movie that Annette Barron did. And um, that, was, that was really kind of, now when, do, when, when did you shoot that? I mean, I think it came out, what, about a year ago? Right. And, uh, but she worked on that, my gosh, for at least two years before that. Right. And her whole, her whole story and trajectory mirrors craft brewers to an infinite, infinite degree because just like in the world of beer, uh, distribution's the name of the game. And she's this tiny little indie filmmaker trying to make something happen in a world dominated by these giant conglomerates in the film world. This is exactly what happens in the world of uh, beer. And uh, she's really just like us. She's passionate and that film, you know, I, we didn't know how much we'd be featured in until the day it premiered and uh, when we were did that simulcast thing with Greg. Yeah, because I think Greg. she said she was like 160 that. hours of footage. It's amazing. But I remember yeah. you making that analogy in the show and I was like, oh. It's, yeah. it's so true, her, her journey. But, and, and, but there's 1,500 brewer, craft brewers out there spreading the message of craft beer. There's really one film out there and right. she's, she's done it. And uh, we get once, particularly right when it came out, we did that, we got lots of really nice response. We didn't know how much we'd be in it. We didn't know if it'd be positive or whatever. And she was very kind to us and telling our story. But what's really neat is today I get, I'd say, 8, 10, 12 emails every day now that it's on Netflix and Comcast and people can see iTunes it in their homes. And, yeah. iTunes, yeah. And it's the, the, the emails are almost identical, which is, you know, you know, I really enjoyed watching this, your story, but this film really made me open my eyes up to the challenges that these small brewers face in this marketplace, and I am going to only drink craft beer from now on. So oh, that's, that's really awesome. Cool. Yeah, that film. I think I, I, for her, I'm sure that hearing something like that is makes it worthwhile. Because I know, um, for me personally, you know, we have eight people that watch this show. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> My wife's one of them. Mariah's, yeah. <laughs> I got to say this, Mariah is always on. Uh, she does all of Dogfish Head's social media. She runs Dogfish.com. She's 
the the she, heart and yeah. soul of our our marketing and what we do to get our word word out. She does and, a lot of twittering at one in the morning. She's insane <laughs> with that stuff. I'll wake up in the middle and I'm like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Are they really on the East Coast?" Because wow, she's twittering she's late. Up. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. But she's a, a lot. Of, she gets to see a lot of other beer media out there, and she's really impressed with the way you guys do this well, show. That's thank you very much. And, uh, wow, little, I'm blushing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I know uh, for me, she has no interest in meeting Russell though. <laughs> <laughs> she will not have the offer made to her, I promise. <laughs> um, no, but I think for me personally, um, one of the turning points for me, because I was going to shut, after we had the, the first two guys, and if you've watched the show from the beginning, you know there was two other people, but um, when they left the show, I kind of was like a little disheartened. I didn't really know what I was going to do, if I wanted to bring it back or not. And I remember meeting somebody at GABF who made kind of a similar comment that like, oh, wow, like I watched your show and I don't drink Coors Light anymore. And I was like, oh, wow, that's... That's epic. Like, yeah. like oh my God, I, one I helped consumer you. At a time. One person, yeah. you know? Right. And, and that's kind of become our mantra is if we can take one person and convert them away from the macro produced loggers that I feel like we're, we're making a difference. Yep. Them. So I'm sure for Annette to hear that you get those kind of emails where people are like, I'm only drinking craft beer now. Yep. Even though that wasn't the focus of what the movie was about, it wasn't right. necessarily about craft beer. The fact that it affected someone's life like that, I'm sure makes a huge difference. Yep. And, um, you know, and our show is all about craft beer advocacy. Um, each week, we we have somebody who writes in and tells us their story. So we're gonna go ahead and share this week's story. Um, the the winner of our craft beer advocate this week is Jacob from Southern California. Congrats, Jacob. And uh, we're going to go I ahead. think it was rigged because these guys are from California, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, last week's winner was from Ohio. Okay, so. nice. <laughs> But uh, so we're going to go the ahead. next 20 are from California. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all friends of ours. But that's because you guys aren't sending them in. Send them in. <laughs> Actually, we're writing all the letters. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to you send in yours, it's advocate at newbrewthursday.com. Send us it in. Let us know what your craft beer story is, whether it's you converting someone, whether it's you being converted, whatever. Just tell us your story. Um, the best ones will win a free Beer Wars DVD. Um, signed by Annette Barron. And again, send in some media. Doesn't have to be a letter. You can send in your videos or audio. Oh, Those and remember, more fun to watch we're not going to give you eight minutes of time on the show. You get about one minute. You get about one minute. <laughs> Try to. Uh, if you send it longer, that's great. We're going to edit it down. Just understand that. So we're going to go ahead and cut to uh, this week's craft beer advocate, it's Jacob. Go, Jacob. Woo! This week's craft beer advocate is Jacob from California. He wrote an awesome letter that was just a little bit too long for the show, but we wanted to share some of it with you. You can find the entire email on our site in the show notes. Jacob says, the craft beer revolution goes beyond just your friends. It's bigger than that. Fast forward to Beachwood Barbecue, a local favorite of mine with some renown. I stopped in to have one glass of Julian Chirago's amazing espresso imperial stout, brewed at Pizza Port San Clemente. I sit next to Dan, a man I've never met, but a friendly bloke who says he likes dark beers and stumbled into this place by chance while I'm business. Naturally, I'm in my element and I talk beer. I mean, this guy's a convert, right? I ask him if he enjoys sour ales and I use the word lambic. Not so much, he says. Fair enough, but prodding I ask which ones he's tasted. He answers with a lambic that I also was not fond of. So I suggested he try a 750 milliliter bottle of Hansen's Artisanal Oud Creek. I pour us both the glass, and I see the complexity of the funk open up a whole new world for my friend. I came for just one glass of beer that night, but after Dan ordered a few more bottles to share from Beachwood's deep cellar, I needed a ride home. Great letter, Jacob, and thanks for writing in. Tell us your craft beer advocacy story at advocate at newbrewthursday.com, or post a video of yourself telling your story online, and we'll include it in the show. Boom. You've been open here at the Brew Pub for... Since when, when did you 15 open? years, 15 95. Years. Okay, and, and you changed laws to open this place up. Yeah, That's we did. That's awesome. In our naivety, we didn't realize it, uh, it was totally illegal to open a brewery in a state that <laughs> We've didn't. We've all been there. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, we've been, and living in Delaware, it's, uh, it's I, I love having our brewery here where it is the beach, and this is pretty much as formal as I have mm -hmm. to dress up. And uh, uh, but we're two hours from DC, Baltimore, Philly, three and a half from New York right. City. So it's a wonderful place to have a distributing brewery and, and live at the beach. And it's also neat because it is such a small state that we can go and knock on senators and house reps' doors and change the, write our own legislation and be in, right on the on. floor of the Senate. We've done that, I think. We had to do it to open the distillery that's behind us. We had to do it hmm. uh, to build a distributing brewery and not just a pub. So we've been up there. We've written about four bills ourselves here at Dogfish Head. And, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's neat. It's, that's it's amazing. So we're, we're, we're proud of well, that. I, my thing, too, is if you're in Philly or New York or Washington, D.C., because I know for my business, I, I go to Washington, D.C. every so often, and 
I've never come here because I'm like, oh, it's all the way in Delaware. I'm not going to drive all the way over there. It's like an hour and a half, two yeah. hours. Like, yep. just drive over here. Yep. It's worth it. It is yeah. so worth it. Yep. Have and a good I mean, time. You can get a hotel right down come the street. In the, and I mean, <laughs> as a craft beer lover, you're probably not much for the beach. So that's fine. Come on the off season and you can get cheap hotels <laughs> yeah. here, too. How much was your hotel yeah. last night? Uh, we made the, a little call, but how much was it? <laughs> it's like 100 bucks a night. Is it? And yeah, it's a really but, nice and it's, hotel but it's for all you're three of us. We all have our own. No, it's Holiday Inn down the street. Yeah, yeah, right down the road. But it's it's free internet access, free breakfast. Of course, we were hungover and didn't wake up in time. Good. Um, <laughs> you did our job, then. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, but it's a cheap hotel. It's easy. Um, this place is so worth the two-hour drive, easily. No. So. Cool. And you can also, I'll, i, I got to give a little plug. Mariah would kill me if I didn't, but because our tours at our big production brewery mm -hmm. do sell out, you got to sign up for them at dogfish.com. Okay. And they run uh, Tuesday through Saturday. So if part of your trip here is wanting to see our production brewery, and it's an awesome tour. It's about an hour, 45-minute tour with samples at the end. And we walk people and take the risk of walking people through every production area so they, they get the whole experience. Uh, but I do recommend that. And if you want to do it, go sign up at the Awesome. At the Definitely. Website. Cool. So what are, what are your future plans? What, what can we expect from Dogfish? Aside from the packs. super secret, jet everyone's packs. getting Excellent. a jetpack. <laughs> Woo! Uh, it better be a cool jetpack. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. None of these grandpa's jetpacks. No, it's got like pink flames. <laughs> pink flames. And like awesome. a light blue smoke. Sweet jetpacks, number one. Now, will they have like the little straws where you can sip beer oh, while yeah. you're flying around? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's so like the transition from the beer way. hat. <laughs> the future for us is, uh, uh, you know, we'll we'll package. Uh, I think 33 different styles of beer this year. Mm -hmm. And that is a challenge, not for us, because we love doing it, but it's a, it's that's where we need the people watching this is support. Because, you know, we're no, we kind of put our big boy underpants on whether or not we wanted to, and we're, frankly, we're bigger than I ever dreamed we'd be. Mm -hmm. uh, we're the biggest craft brewery in the Mid-Atlantic, uh, but we're making exactly the kind of beers that we've always wanted, and now we can afford to do the investments in QC. We have an amazing five-person uh, QC department, and we can buy ingredients from around the world and do whatever we want, but all of our energy, money, resources goes in to the liquid inside the bottle, not really into the advertising and marketing outside the bottle. And we want to keep doing that. So our challenge is as we get bigger and as retailers consolidate and distributors consolidate is they want you to be one thing. In our case, they're like, oh, what's your best selling beer? 60 Minute. Oh, all right, you're the 60 Minute Brewing Company. We're right. going to just focus on selling yeah. 60 Minute. Right. Stack them high, let them fly. Right. And we have no interest in that uh, model. We want to keep, we give as much attention to Pangea as, as we mm -hmm. do to 60 Minute. Right you, know, you know, and so we want to just keep, you know, flying our freak flag and introducing new beers and and celebrating the breadth of our portfolio. So the only thing I can tell you is next year there's going to be beers that don't exist this year. And if you come to our pub, and we've tried them all today, <laughs> yes, and it's still it's still light up. And uh, we're, we're leaving with our jetpacks. That's yeah, right. You get, exactly. you get your complimentary yeah. jetpacks. Jacob, <laughs> with, you, you with, picked the wrong week because next week, <laughs> next week, free jetpacks, free jetpacks. Uh, but uh, so yeah, I mean we uh, we. Uh, Particular beers that are, are, are on the horizon that I'm excited about is this blend of the African Tej and the Imperial Stout that'll be in bottles in some version late summer 2010. Our My Antonia, which is our continually hopped uh, Pilsner, Imperial okay. Pilsner, which started seven or eight years ago as uh, first prescription pills and then golden shower. Uh, <laughs> um, and we're doing a beer called Namaste that we originally did as a shout out to our friends at uh, Trey Fontaine over okay. in uh, Trey Fontaine over in uh, Belgium, uh, which is a beer made with dried organic orange peels and orange meat dried, uh, lemongrass uh, and coriander. So a, a version of a wit uh, hmm. beer that'll be in bottles locally. Uh, so yeah, we get a lot of fun things on the horizon. There's right usually at least two out of twenty beers on tap at our pub here that are made here. Right. Uh, but we had one t a special test batch of one twenty clog in the tanks downstairs, so uh, we're a little behind on that yeah. right now. You know, Sam, thank you very much. I see you're out of beer, so we're gonna have to go downstairs and get some more. <laughs> yep. um, on that note, we're gonna wrap it up and say, stay, stay safe, safe. Drink, drink beer, drink beer. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Cheers.